Um, so as an entrepreneur, you know, you've got another company that you're building right now. You're, I know you're also involved with several others as an investor, as a board member. So you're very close, you know, to the entrepreneurial community and, and the operators and you, and you are an operator. What, what are you seeing in terms of some of the challenges, you know, some of the, maybe the newer best practices that you're seeing out there and, you know, how companies are, are overcoming and dealing with a lot of this. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, uh, Mike. So, um, so I think the first uh, challenge we had during this, uh, this initial COVID hit and still lingering a bit, uh, you know, are uh, resets. So there's still a few uh, retailers out there that haven't fully caught up on resets, resets and that's, uh, you know, that's been pretty impactful on uh, uh, go-to-market strategy, execution, and ultimately some of the, you know, some of the proof points on, on some of the innovations. So I think from, a, from an operating uh, sales uh, uh, perspective, that's, uh, I think that's gonna continue as well in, um, you know, in, in states where we go back into lockdown or where various retailers are less um, predisposed to having, um, um, doing resets, et cetera. So I think that's going to be with us for a while. Um, and then it's sort of internally we're, you know, we're challenged because we run manufacturing. We have our own uh, facility here where we do our own warehousing, our own D2C shipping, uh, our own uh, manufacturing. And we have a lot of people coming and going in our different parts of our 80,000 square foot facility. And it's really challenging. We have set policy. Um, policy is evolving, but the enforcement of policy to have consistent oversight across all divisions is something that as a uh, fast growing um, smaller company is really challenging. We're looking at a resource potentially of hiring um, to help us manage this specifically. And, um, you know, there's oftentimes I go home and I think about my day and I ran into the manufacturing uh, facility and I saw 10, 11, 12 temps that came in that were transients that didn't, uh, that don't work here. I've never seen them before. I don't know what they're touching. I don't know what they're breathing. It's really, it's really sketchy for, for me and for, and for us. And, um, and so it's one thing to be able to govern our own internal staff, and even that's a challenging given how fast we're moving and how sometimes careless we could be. When you're moving fast and we're super competitive and we're trying to get something out the door. But yet on top of that, the, the amount of different sort of temps that we have coming in. Um, and all I can say is it's been one of the biggest concerns of the company outside of meeting top line and meeting our contribution margin numbers. Um, it's really one of the biggest challenges and, and, and concerns we have as a senior leadership right now. Yeah, I, I bet. Josh, what, what are you seeing companies do in terms of trying to, to deal with that from a, a staffing perspective, you know, dealing with this, this, this new reality and safety and, you know, keeping everyone healthy in manufacturing, in the office, and even remotely? It's re I mean, it's really a big challenge is, is organizations look to re-enter and phase their teams back into the workplace, whether that's, you know, manufacturing, whether that's retail, whether that's traditional office space. I mean, I don't think there's a company on the planet that's not talking about it right now um, that has employees, even if they're working remotely, how they're feeling. Um, you you, you want to be able to geo-target caseload. Um, we actually... Um, because of that, in being in kind of the HR recruiting space, did a lot of listening in my software business, Pinata, we just launched a solution that's essential basically for preparing companies to reopen their doors. It's called Heyday, um, which stands for how are you today? But it's basically a wellness screening app for businesses to safely reopen the retail, factory, office spaces. And it basically tracks employee and visitor wellness, including temporary staff. But it's like a traffic control solution. So Heyday, like it enables offices to enforce space capacity limits and new protocols for visitors and workers. And that's the whole thing is like, who's coming to my space? Because God forbid one person comes in there and there's an outbreak, your facility shut down. Mm -hmm. But like who was working during that shift? How many people were there? And Bill has a whole nother. It's just like, who's touching what when they're there? 
temperature scanning, um, heat sensors. So, you know, it's real. And by the way, it's not going anywhere because companies are just now, you know, manufacturing and retail people are working, but organizations are going to start phasing back in in 2021. And even post COVID, yeah. you know, companies are going to want to know that their employees are healthy and safe. 